So we are here today with Jason Saltzman. And I'm Danya Hamad. And Jason is the current CEO and founder of Alley. And I don't want to call it a co working space because it is so much more than that. Mm. Tell me, what is Alley? Uh, everything. Yeah, wow. Alley's everything. <laughs> no, so Alley is a business incubator, mm -hmm. um, but it's more of a connection tool, mm -hmm. right, for very early stage companies. Uh, and we partner with some of the largest companies in the world, mm -hmm. and we bridge the gap between resources. So a small company that has little to no resources and really doesn't have a, a way to grow. Um, and we partner with some of the largest companies in the world that have a ton of resources, they just don't know how to deploy them. Mm -hmm. But they know that mixing with the startup world, uh, they have access to new technology that's potentially going to be their future. Right. So that's Ali in a nutshell. Right. Well, that is a lot. But also, it's something that, you know, we're seeing a lot of, especially in New York, a lot of, like, collaborative spaces, uh, working with startup companies. It's really yeah. exciting. How long have you been doing this? Too long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm excited. Um, so I've been doing it. So we started Alley eight years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, officially opened our first door, our first physical location in 2012. Mm -hmm. But the company's been around for eight years. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing it for a long time. Nice. Yeah. And even though this is, eight years is really not a long time relatively to have yeah. a company just through all the stages you go through the ideas uh the seed you know round funding um getting people on board getting people in a physical space sure yeah. um i want to know about like the hardships of that because it must have not been all like roses and rainbows and unicorns like what what were the hardest parts of getting this thing like to life everything oh wow <laughs> No, every, every industry and every yeah. company has a story, right? I think what the media does in a bad way yeah. is glorify entrepreneurship, you know, where mm -hmm. it makes it seem like, you know, I love the saying, it took me 10 years to look like an overnight success, right? Yeah. Because in reality, the grit and the grind and everything it took to get here was a bloody mess. Right. And all the media focuses on is like a billion dollar exit, or a unicorn, mm -hmm. there are like 80 unicorns and thousands and millions of companies, right? Mm -hmm. um, and most that fail. So mm -hmm. there's a story that's just not being spoken about. So I'm an advocate of telling the truth and especially in business because it, even, you know, yes, we're not the largest company in the world and yes, we've only been around for eight years, um, but it was a bloody war to get to this point. And I know that every company that I interact with, which, it with, with in the thousands that have been here since we started mm -hmm. um, has a story mm -hmm. you know that's that's of that elk of holy shit like I have to go through bloody hell to get to where I am and we we have we have a bunch of those right you know so there's a lot you know there's a lot of stories that come out of like the reality of how we grew the business yeah I think people respect you more if you are truth telling your story sure. I mean I I totally understand what you're saying where it seems now uh, entrepreneurship is totally glorified and yeah. it's like hashtag trending right yeah. now everyone wants to be an entrepreneur um but it's not it's not not all that's cracked up to be and did you have companies before this that just like failed like yeah in your face so i've been self-employed <laughs> since i was 17 mm -hmm. and i built over 20 companies and 90 percent of them have failed mm -hmm. so i would probably say that statistically speaking i'm a huge failure mm -hmm. um but it's not about I believe failure is just part of the process. It's about, you know, keeping going, like learning from the mistakes that you made. You know, those are the lessons that teach you, you know, how to shift and weave and bob to make something work. Mm -hmm. So I think the, the, the most powerful thing in business, I believe, is resilience, right. right? And you get to a resilient point in your life when you're able to accept the failures and the things that were harder mm -hmm. to get over as lessons that you learn from and you grow from it. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been able to do over the years. I just haven't, I just haven't given up yet, yeah. you know? Um, and I think that that term failure is a very subjective one. Yeah. I don't really believe it to exist at all. It's just, it, these are lessons, you know, right. these are things that we have to learn to, you know, succeed. Right, and I, I agree with you. I also don't believe in the word failure. It's more like those things weren't meant to be or they're more life lessons, you know? Yeah. We're all, we're in a school of life and that's just something that keeps you 
learning and, right. and progressing. You're not going to wake up every day and it's going to be like, this is the best day ever. Right. Oh, man, you know? I wish. Maybe one day shit. out of the whole year. <laughs> That's right. Shit happens. And you either deal with it, yeah. you know, or you retreat. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you learn when you do it over again. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you learn when you retreat, right. you know. So it's life. I think business is an extension of life. Mm -hmm. um, I think it mimics life. I think it accelerates that. Because I think business is problem solving, mm -hmm. right? And if you're not in the game to solve problems, then you're in the wrong game. Mm -hmm. Because if there wasn't a problem to solve, there wouldn't be an opportunity for me to make a business out of it. Right. It all makes sense. It goes hand in hand together. It so. does. And I think most people that are really successful um, start with fixing a problem that's a need for themselves and they don't realize, oh, wow, there's a whole audience that this can serve. I'm not alone. And I think the yeah. most successful companies have that mindset of, I'm not alone, this person has the same problem, so does that person and their mom and their cousin, and then that's how you, you know, fill that need and, and kind of grow into a company that everyone, you know, wants. Sure. Um, so my other question to you is, based on young entrepreneurs or old entrepreneurs any age, what's like one mistake, and that's a subjective word too, but what's something that most people encounter really early on that you think like don't even worry about that yeah i mean the one commonality i see in a lot of like aspiring like creators entrepreneurs what have you is that they underestimate the task at hand mm -hmm. you know and i think it all has to do with the same systemic issues that we're talking about like mm -hmm. the media portraying entrepreneurship is sort of like this easy unbelievable thing to get into oh i'm going to start a business because I don't want, I don't want to have I want to be my own boss. Right. I want to create my own hours. Well, guess what? When you start a business, you have a million bosses. Mm -hmm. You have the team that you represent. They're basically your boss cuz you you might think that you work for them, but it's the other way around because you have to empower them to do good. Mm -hmm. And then every one of your clients is your boss. Mm -hmm. If you want thousands of clients, you have thousands of bosses. And that shit is not easy, right? So I think it's really going back to the original statement underestimating the task at hand mm. you know thinking that you're about to get into something because it's the easier route is something I see often whereas building something out of nothing is one of the hardest things in the world to do mm -hmm. and that's what you're about to get into so right and I think most people assume that being a CEO and founder um, let's say they have a passion in whatever it is like music entertainment uh, real estate uh, being a CEO and founder, you do less of what you love because you're managing other people. Can mm -hmm. you like speak to that? I mean, I can, I can validate it. <laughs> <laughs> I can verify the fact that, you know, you there's a there's there's definitely a love, mm -hmm. you know, for what I, I do, yeah. and there, I believe that's a commonality in a lot of CEOs and founders. Mm -hmm. Like, you love what you do. There's a piece, but the other pieces. You know, the hard stuff, the things that you're not good at, mm -hmm. the things that you have to struggle at learning or or having like an open mind and less of an ego to admitting you're not great. Right. And then getting people around you that are better than you to do what you're not good at. That takes a lot to admit, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you really have to tone down your ego, which got you where you're at. So you have to balance that out in life and say, you know what, like I'm not good at this and we can't scale if I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. So you literally have to like fire yourself from certain positions, you know, and that's a cold, hard reality to face too. And that's not fun, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it, again, it's part of the process. Right. So. And I want to talk a little bit too about Ali having all these diverse people, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. maybe working for other companies. Um, why is that so important now, like, that we have these, like, co-working spaces that have opportunities? Like, we're sitting in your uh, media room right now where people, you have a partnership with colleges that come yeah. in, and you were talking about journalists are involved, and so you're really, like, expanding what it is to be collaborative. Yeah. Why do we need that? Huh. Well, that's a good question. One, um, again, building something out of nothing is one of the hardest things in the world to do and it's very very stressful and I always believe that having a, a, a good support system around you mm -hmm. of people that are going through very similar things maybe at different stages 
could be really useful in the process. Mm-hmm. You know, so we ultimately learn from each other. And having a co-working space in an environment where you go there every day, it's not forced. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to have a beer with somebody that you're sitting next to or having a coffee with them um, at any time during the day. And you could talk about your problems very naturally. Yeah. So I think it's a very authentic way of meeting people, especially when the community is a curated community. Mm-hmm where people share their willingness to help others. Yeah. And I think that's something we did a really good job at. Allie's not Allie because of the business. Allie's Allie because of the people that come here every day mm-hmm. and help each other. So you were saying that you can have a beer with somebody here, but you can yeah. work with them and you can figure out what someone else is doing that's not related to maybe what you're doing, but sparks an idea. Have you been able to see um, people here working on things together that didn't know each other before like sure yeah like organic sure. partnerships yeah part of what happens out of the support system and learning about other people look like i think very early on you know there's a lot of idealistic mm-hmm. aspiring entrepreneurs that are like i want to build an app that's nobody's built before mm-hmm. and then they go in and and more than likely there's a reason why nobody's built it there's probably no need for it right but then they'll meet somebody or they're in the process of like meeting someone authentically and trusting them and learning about like the fashion industry mm-hmm. and being like oh shit like i don't have to build an app a social app for dogs <laughs> you know nobody's going to use it but there's new technology that's being built in the fashion industry mm-hmm. that's very practical and by the way I can make money doing it rather than like go through this whole process of like validating an idea, product market fit. And they learn being next to somebody who's working in a different industry Mm -hmm. and meeting them authentically. You get to learn, especially in an environment like a co-working space, you get to learn about all of that. Mm -hmm. And I've seen it time and time again, like as ideas fade out and they end up not working the people still move on and live Mm -hmm. and they go on using their skill sets in a new type of business or a pre-existing business to really, really make change in that industry. I see it happen all the time, creating opportunity for everybody that's involved. Mm. Nice. And yeah, with people working together here, I mean, I think what's also a really beautiful thing is that entrepreneurship is really lonely. Um, Mm. I know we we hear so many people saying that and it's true because no one really has the same passion for your company and your dream quite like you do. Yeah. But I think what's beautiful about this is that there's a camaraderie. Mm. Uh, and some people aren't very uh, social and they would prefer to stay working at home mm. uh, and building their business and their castle. But for the vast majority, I think that's why uh, companies like Ali are so successful because people don't want to be alone in that. Well, I think that what we tapped into mm-hmm. was a culture shift. Yeah. I think what you're talking about is like sort of like a like um it, it's the 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 work alone in a vacuum idealism of building things is yeah. becoming obsolete. And I think that more than ever people are open with their ideas and they realize that they can't build something if they're going to do it in a vacuum because they need to validate their ideas openly so they know that they're onto something big, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that many of like the incubators, accelerators, and co-working spaces out there have proven that, you know, all of the successes that come out of like, look at like the worst, the the, the worst, the first class of Y Combinator, Mm -hmm. right? You know, you had Reddit, Twitch, you know, some of the biggest technology companies of our day Mm -hmm. came out of this collaborative consumption of all these awesome people working together. And I think that that inspires a whole new generation of people being like, well, how'd you do that? You know how I did it? I was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I opened up. I wasn't afraid of somebody stealing my idea. I knew that if I was going to do it, I needed the buy-in from those and others around me and the support. So I'm going to be more open to sharing my ideas. And then it becomes like, I can't do this sitting in my apartment. I can't do this like on on my headphones by myself. You know, I need the support of a community. And I think that that's what drives these spaces mm-hmm. tremendously. I think it's like, it's not office space. Um, it's actually in an, in a community environment that you are putting yourself into. And the cost of it isn't being shown up as a line item of real estate anymore. It's an investment in their future. Yeah. It's the same reason why people go to college, right? right. That's what college sells. It. I mean, 
most people that go to a college for a certain degree don't graduate to do that job. You know, they go, unless you're a doctor or a lawyer, you go for the network, right. you know? Well, now you don't need to go to college for that network anymore. That's why more and more people aren't going to school and they're coming into spaces like this and taking boot, 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 boot camp style classes, learning how to code, yeah. and then creating like, you know, 100 or $200 million businesses. It's happening yeah. all the time now. Yeah, and you don't uh, come out with massive amounts of debt. So that's... <laughs> that's another side to it. That's another side to it. Where do you see technology uh, in what you do in the future? Well, technology is a part of our lives, for better or for worse, mm -hmm. every day, no matter what we do. And I think I love... I'm an optimist. So I look at like the optimistic parts of technology. Now we can connect with people mm -hmm. faster. We could share messaging faster. Uh, we could draw a demographic's attention faster. Mm -hmm. um, data shows if our message is being effective. Data shows even in growing a business, technology has shifted where it used to cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to build a minimum viable product, mm -hmm. and now you could do it for free. Yeah, you know that's a technology shift. So more and more as technology increases, the ability to grow new technology on top of that increases. And I'm extremely optimistic about the future, especially when it comes to business. Yeah. I think that we're seeing a lot, I know that we're seeing a lot of faster growth, faster iteration, um, and new technology that's going to make our, essentially make our lives better. It's going to help us live longer. Yeah, and that's what we all want. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well. For the most part, unless you're a weirdo. That's true. <laughs> well, I think this is a great way to wrap up our interview um, real quick if you want to plug in any social channels where we can get updates on you and Allie yeah uh, you know go for it shoot them out yeah just go to Allie.com mm -hmm. we've got a bunch of really cool stories um, of the community and new partners in technology um, if you're in New York City uh, actually New York City Washington DC Palo Alto uh, and about to be Los Angeles yeah. We're building uh, a new 5G lab mm -hmm. um, with Verizon across the country. So come and check it out. Cool. Thank you so much, Jason. You're welcome. Pleasure. Pleasure. Fabulous. Cool. This Great. is going to go everywhere. And I'll sit